Hello and welcome to Let's Code an Indie Game episode 5. This is the series where we go through the tools and techniques needed to get started with independent game development. Let's jump straight into our code and do a tiny bit of cleanup before we review what we did in episode 4. Okay, so what we can do straight away is we're no longer really using these four variables here, adventurer, player, slime, sprite, and slime. So we're just going to delete them. And we're going to make a couple of the variables inside of our love.load method local. So they only exist for as long as the love.load function or things inside of the love.load function hang onto them. So our adventurer sprite and our player and our slime sprite, these can all just be local variables now. And the only variable we want to hang on to outside of our love.load function is the game itself. There we go. And the reason we're doing that is because it's just good practice to delete variables that we're not using anymore because they don't confuse us later on. It keeps things nice and tidy. Very good. Okay, so last episode, we introduced the idea of a game state. And the game state class is, let's just have a look at it. The game state class, the job of this guy or girl, person, code, whatever, the job of this piece of code is to keep track of all of the entities inside of our game keep track of the player, and make sure that everything gets updated. So this deals with the update and the drawing logic for us so that we don't have to worry about it in our main function. So let's just go through the methods we added quickly. We have an add entity method, and this is for telling the game state about an entity we want it to keep track of. We have an update method, and this will call update on all of our entities, and it will also give these entities access to the game state so that they can make decisions based on things like other entities and where the player is. We have a draw method which just loops through all of our entities and draws them. And we have a create method which just creates a new game state. If you need to uh, know any more then you can always go back to the last episode and just take a look. You know, slow it down and I do stress go as quickly as you need to to, to just get stuff working. You know, it's not a race. Uh, software development is not a race, it is a marathon, so don't worry about taking a breather or two. So we started to use or use the capabilities our game state gave us inside of our bounce method. So if we look at our bounce movement strategy here, we can see that when we update a bouncing entity, we now have a reference to the game state or an argument which is the game state. And this argument lets us determine the bounce height by how close the player is to the sprite. So what we do is we just grab the player out of our game state and then we work out the distance, which is this equation here, from the player uh, to the sprite or from the sprite to the player. And then if the player is less than 100 pixels away, then we make them bounce higher. We make the slime bounce higher. If a player is further away than that, the slime bounces at the normal height. And what we're going to do in this episode is we're going to generalize some of this maths into some vector equations so that we can do more interesting movement things. So let's have a quick think about vectors. I'll just throw a diagram up here. So if you've not come across the idea of a vector before, or a vector in mathematics or computing, don't worry too much, it's actually a very simple concept. It's just the difference between two positions. And we already know how positions work because that's how we draw to the screen. We say, I want to draw a player at position x equals 50, y equals 50, for instance. So if we generalize that a bit and say we just have two positions, one position a, one position b, and the x value of a is xa, and the x value of b is, sorry, y value of b is yb, so I'll start that again. We say the uh, x value of position A is xA and the, x, the y value of position A is yA. So honestly, this is easier to understand than it is to say. Uh, then we have a B position and that's at xB and yB. The vector is just the difference between those two positions. So the difference between the x values and the difference between the y values. So our vector has two values which belong to it, and we'll just call those values, as you can see on the uh, right of the screen here, dx and dy. D stands for difference. So we say the vector is just the difference in our x value and the difference in our y value. And what does that give us? What does that let us do? Well, if we look, just move the diagram on slightly, we can very easily get the distance between points A and points B, because we just take dx squared plus dy squared and then take the square root of that. 
that's a good old Pythagoras, that's saying that the slope of a triangle is equal to, or the squared slope of a triangle is equal to the square of dx plus the square of dy, or the square of the other two sides. So nice and easy, we can get the distance, we know how to times numbers together and get a square root. And then we can also work out the unit vector. And the unit vector just tells us how far we need to move in the x and the y direction in order to move one unit in the in the direction of the slope between a and b in this example. And the way we do that is we just take the dx value and divide it by the distance, we take the dy value and divide it by the distance, and then if we want to move one unit towards b from a, we just take our x a position and we add the dx divided by distance value, we take our y a position, and we take the dy divided by distance value. So the main reason I'm running through the maths here isn't to teach people the maths, although if you did learn something, fantastic. The main reason for doing this is just to introduce people to some of the language I'm going to be using when I talk about the code, um, so you're not hearing it for the first time. So don't stress if you don't understand the maths. Personally, I'm not very good at maths, I just know enough to be dangerous. But this is what this series is all about. It's about giving people enough knowledge to be dangerous. So let's implement some of this stuff inside of our code. Okay, so the first thing we need is a way of getting positions. So let's dive back into our entities class, entity.lua, and let's add a new function. And we'll just call this function to position. And we want to take in self, uh, because it's a instance method, so we want to call it on an instance. And, oops, I'm missing the to position equals function takes in self and we're going to return a new table and we're just going to make this table next to our return method so that we return it and inside of our table so one thing Lua lets you do is you can name the values inside of a table so we're going to say the value called x inside of the table we return is going to be equal to self.x the value of y is self.y and unsurprisingly the value of z is self.z There we go. So now we can use this, we can get the positions back out of our entity. We just wire it up down here. Equals to position. Very good. So now if we go back to our bounce height inside of bounce.lua, we can, we can replace some of this. We can see where we were doing player x and player y. We can, and dx and dy, we can actually just replace this now with, I'll do it underneath to start with, we can say dx is equal to game.player. We call to position because our player is just an entity. And we just grab the x value of our player. Now, because we're going to use to position quite often, let's actually pull out a variable called player position and put this equal to game.player to position. There we go, and then down here we can say dx just equals player position.x minus. And now we can do the same thing with our entity and say entity position equals entity to position. So dx is equal to player position dot x minus entity position dot x. dy is going to be player position dot y minus entity position dot y. And because at the moment we only care about the distance sort of on the floor or on the screen, we're not going to worry about the z value. So we can get rid of these values here. Okay, so now we have our distance method, which I'll just update to use. Ah, oh, that should still work actually. So let's just run the game and check everything still works. Yep, our slimes still bounce higher when we stand next to them. 
Okay, so now let's pull out our distance method into a into another class. Let's introduce a class to deal with most of our vector mathematics for us. So go over to source, make a new folder, call this folder math. And inside of math, let's create a new file and we'll call this vector.lua. And we'll do local vector equals empty table and we'll return, just return that table so we've got something to hang our code off. And then we can say vector.distance is a function and we're going to take two vectors here so we can say you know, the vector that we want to go from and the vector that we're going to. So in our diagram, we went from A to B. And if we remember our distance is equal to, dx, uh, yeah, dx squared plus dy squared, square root, uh, all square rooted. See, I told you I was not excellent at the, uh, the old maths here, but that's okay. So let's just implement our distance um, distance in here. So local dx equals 2.x minus from dot x and local dy equals 2.y minus from dot y from. There we go. And then if we return dx times dx, which is dx squared, plus dy times dy, and we do math dot, so we'll just use Lua, Lua already has a lot of built-in maths functions, so we'll just use math dot square root here. Go. Math dot square root, and we'll pass all of this in. Okay, so we now have a function that will give us the distance between two vectors. So let's go back to our entity. Let's pull in our vector library or our vector module. And because we use vectors so often, we're just going to call it v. I normally don't abbreviate things, but because we're going to be using this so often, we're just going to call, call our vector module v in this file. So it's in source.math.vector. Oops, sorry, we didn't want that in our entity at all. We wanted that in our bounce method. So let's just move that into our bounce method where we uh, where I meant to put it. Okay, and now we can just replace the distance here with v dot uh, distance, and we can just pass in our entity position because that's where we're going from and our player position and now we can just get rid of these values here as well because we do it all of in, all inside our vector method and our bounce height is starting to look a bit nicer we just see we get the distance between these two positions and then we return something based on that distance so let's see if we've broken anything nope, everything still seems to work very nice. So what about unit vectors? That was the other big concept we introduced in the diagrams. Let's go and code up a method inside of our vector module to deal with unit vectors. And what we're going to call this method is normalize, because when you turn a regular vector into a unit vector, it's called normalizing it. So again, let's just take a from and to value here. So if you remember, what we did when we normalized a vector was we took dx and we divided it by the distance and we took dy and we divided it by the distance. So we can just go ahead again and come up with dx is 2x minus from x, dy is 2y minus from y, and then this time we are going to Oh, and we need the distance, but we can get the distance by using our distance function. So we'll say distance equals 
vector dot distance from and to then what we need to return is an x value of and again we're ignoring the z values here for now we may use them later but at the moment we can get away with just doing a lot of our maths in two dimensions which is a bit easier so our x value is going to be equal to or dx i suppose is going to be equal to dx divided by distance and our dy value is going to be equal to tidy this up a bit, is going to be equal to dy divided by distance. Okay, so what can we do with our normalized vector? Well, one thing we can do is introduce another style of movement. So let's go ahead and make a new file inside of movement, and we will call it follow player. Dot Lua. And we'll just create create our empty table here and return it. And we need to give it an update method because all of our movement strategies have update methods. So update and this is a function. And if we just remind ourselves by looking at our bounce method quickly, if we look at update, we can see that we take an entity, then that's the entity that we're updating, and the game. So let's go ahead and do that. Entity and game. Now what we're going to do here is we are going to grab the player's position. So let's go ahead and player position equals game dot player to position and we'll get the entity position and we will say the entity position is equal to what well, entity to position now we'll pull in the vector module and again we'll just call it v to save a bit of space and it is in source.math.vector Okay, and what we will now do is we can take these two positions and we can grab our unit vector. So that method was called normalize. So we're going to do v dot normalize. And again, we want to go from our entity position to our player position. And we need to store this. So we'll say local, just call it unit vector in here. And now what we can say is we can take our entity dot x position and we can add the dx of our unit vector plus unit vector dot dx and the same with our y value entity dot y plus unit vector dot dy and hopefully what this will do is it will move um, move any object with this movement strategy one unit on the screen um, towards the player so let's go ahead and see if it works so if we go into main.lua and Again, we'll just pull it into main.lua for now. Eventually, we will tidy this up. But for now, let's just pull it straight into main class. So we say follow player equals require source logic AI movement follow player. And let's tone down the number of slimes. So let's make eight slimes down here. And then we're going to make one more slime so we can do game add entity entity dot create 
and we'll use our slime sprite and let's just start him off at um, let's say 500 300 for x and y value 0 for the z value we'll give him a speed of uh, 4 although we're not using speed and we'll give him the follow player movement and let's see what happens here we go we have one slime which very slowly follows the player around the screen fantastic So now if we go back into our follow player movement strategy, um, how do we make this faster? Well, because we're using a unit vector, and we know a unit vector is always equal to one movement, um, or sorry, was always equal to one unit of movement, we can just times our dx and our dy values by our entity.speed value. And now we know that our entity will always move based on their speed, and they'll always move because it's one, one times speed equals speed, so they will always move uh, a total of one in whichever direction the player's in. So let's see if our... Um, there we go. Our slime is suddenly quite a bit faster. Now, if I just go into our game state and swap the order in which things are drawn so that the player is on the bottom. So this is just... Uh, Literally, the order in which we draw in which we draw things in the game is the order in which, um, or the order we draw in the code is the order things are drawn in the game. Things at the back are drawn first. So if we flip over again, we see when our sprite, um, when our slime reaches our player, he kind of bounces around because he can't quite get to the same position as our player. He either overshoots it or undershoots it, and so he bounces around forever. So let's uh, let's fix that. So if we go into follow player.lua, the other thing we want to get is the distance. And this is just v.distance. And again, entity position, player position. And so now we're just going to say if the distance is greater than, and let's say, you know, let, let's say 10. Then we want to do everything underneath. But if it's less than 10, we're not, we're just not going to worry about it for now. So save, let's just see if that works. Sorry, if distance is greater than 10, not less than 10. And now we see that our slime just comes to a stop. When he's, you know, when he's almost caught up with the player, he just chills out. He doesn't worry about it anymore. And that's what we want. Cool, so I think we've covered a lot of ground, so I'm going to recap what we've done very quickly. We didn't write an awful lot of code, but I think we introduced a lot of important concepts. So I'll quickly recap, and then that will be it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. So let's recap very quickly. So first of all, in our entity, we added the two position function, and this will just turn an entity into a position. It's actually a 3D vector because it gives us our Z value as well, but at the moment we're ignoring our Z value and using it as a 2D position. Sorry, position, not vector. Always get those two mixed up. Okay, so we can get the position of an entity. Then we created our vector class, our vector module, and inside of our vector module we have a couple of useful methods for dealing with vectors. We have a method to get the distance um, between two positions, and we have a method to normalize a vector or normalize the vector between two positions. And then we use these functions in our follow player uh, movement strategy to make one of our slimes follow the player around the screen. And the way we do that is we just grab hold of the unit vector and we add the values of the unit vector to the entity's positions and we times it by speed. And this way we always know that we're getting nice smooth movement and we're always moving the correct amount in each direction. And importantly, we only do this if the distance, if the slime is far is you know more than 10 away from the player. Because once the slime hits the position, he can't quite hit the position exactly, so he'll just bounce around and it doesn't look very nice. But if we do this, we have some nice smooth, nice smooth movement as we follow the player around the screen.
And finally, if we go into our main.lua method and we change the movement from a bounce to follow player down here and we run the game, we see that our player is suddenly surrounded by an army of slimes. There we go. Excellent, so I'm going to finish up here. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you're enjoying it so far. As always, if you'd like to like or sub, that would be very much appreciated, and appreciated even more if you'd like to give me any feedback, ask any questions, so I can better tailor the series to be more useful to you folks at home. That would be awesome. Thanks very much for watching, and goodbye.